Well, good day. Here we are on Friday afternoon, on yeah, the 26th of this is February. It's Friday, 26th of October, 2018. Uh, I'm sitting in a house in uh, Mount Hagen, which is uh, yeah, really pleasant, <laughs> a blessing to be here uh, as friends of, of Abraham's uh, who have made this home available for visiting missionaries to the area, which is great because Abraham's village is a fair way out of town and so to come in and have access to running water, uh, hot running water even, so we get to have a shower, uh, which I really needed yesterday, and a toilet which you can sit on, uh, which is great because I was too tired to squat. And also we got power, uh, so I can charge my phone, and actually decent phone signal, so we've got all the luxuries and relatively safe, but in saying that uh, there's been a bit of a tribal unrest, uh, some issues over land in the last day or two. Um, yesterday afternoon a guy was, was disemboweled and he passed away uh, early hours of the morning this morning which created a bit of a tremor in the community. Um, that's one thing if someone's injured but in this sort of revenge culture if someone dies the stakes are suddenly a lot higher. And uh, yeah so the tribe, uh, well, one of the tribes involved is Abraham's tribe and uh, the same tribe as the people we're staying with. So. They're trying to keep a low profile, so we're, we're a little tentative this morning as to whether or not, um, uh, or who would be able to take us to the airport, whether or not it'd be safe for me to drive to the airport. Uh, we ended up, uh, an older gentleman who's well known in the area as a, a Lutheran minister, uh, he took us and went sort of a windy back way to, to get us there. We had no, no issues, but uh, they are sort of being careful, and Abraham and um, the young guy, whose home we're staying in here, just went down to the, to the school just over an hour ago now um, to turn in an assignment that was due. But they, they said the school's just down the road and back and they should be back fairly soon. So I'm not sure when I should start worrying about them um, and if they're okay. But trust that they're safe in the Lord's hands and uh, yeah, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, it is nice being here and, and great to rest. I think last night was the first night since I've been in PNG that I slept more than six hours, which, yeah, I've, I've needed. I am exhausted. Um, physically, it's been hard work, hot work. Yesterday, we didn't get as much done. It was just as we wanted to. It was just so hot. Uh, yeah, Chris and I were both suffering with a bit of heat exhaustion. Uh, we ended up digging out underneath the, the building or the flooring that we put down because on top just the radiant heat coming off was melting us. Um, yeah, we hoped to get walls up but didn't get that far. We just got the plates marked out so I can start framing on Monday with some of the guys hopefully. And yeah, it's been, been fun and challenging working with some of the local guys. They're all very enthusiastic and they all want to help and they all want to hold the tape measure and they all want to do this and, and that and the other which is great but yeah, we had a few dramas there that uh, the guys mustn't have been holding the tape measure quite the way we told them to because our measurements were all out so <laughs> we ended up sort of kindly asking if they would all sort of start digging underneath and be really productive under there and Chris and I went over our measurements again and found that actually our original measurements were correct to where we'd marked them um yeah so <laughs> we sort of lost an hour or so there trying to decipher uh, what was going on but got it all done in the end and we also eventually when we came back from lunch feeling we should work and not wanting to. Uh, we also joined the guys underneath digging, which was fairly pleasant actually compared to being on top. It's nicely shaded under there. But uh, yeah, say goodbye to Chris this morning at the airport. Uh, I don't know if it was just that hard to say goodbye or if it's just that I'm emotional because I'm tired. But uh, yeah, we all shed a few tears as we sent him on his way. And then Abraham and I went round to the hospital to say day to Jeremiah, uh, the guy that, who had his arm cut off what was that Tuesday when we came in? And apparently they were expecting us. They had been told that we'd come yesterday. I'm not sure why, but they're like, oh no, they won't be coming today. Um, and then, yeah, it was was today. They, they said, yeah, we're expecting you guys to come today, <laughs> which was really good. And Abraham, of course, um, took every opportunity to give all the glory to God. And um, yeah, we, I don't know if you'd say went to pains to to elaborate on but yeah certainly just to encourage Jeremiah that uh, the Lord has a plan for his life the Lord has spared him um, again giving him a second chance at life 
Um, that, that that swing was meant to take his head, but uh, the Lord Lord spared him at the cost of his arm. And so, yeah, he's he's got another chance now, and uh, let's hope he takes it. Uh, they were very thankful. They asked to, to pass on their, their sincere thanks to those around the world who've been praying for them. And, uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, if you've been involved or will be involved, then, yeah, thank you for, for praying for Jeremiah in the situation. But, yeah, I'd have to say that's probably added to my fatigue, just the emotional roller coaster, the uncertainty of what's going on, um, situations here change so rapidly and um, ups and downs and yeah, it's, it's taken it out of me <laughs> but I'm very grateful my health has, has held up really well um, other than the fact that I need a rest so yeah this afternoon and perhaps tomorrow will take a bit of time out to rest um, I've been oh, what have I done yeah preached four or five times since I've been here uh, a couple of times on Sunday a couple of evening services uh, yeah, which has been great. We have had one group there on Wednesday night. It would have been where, yeah, we had nearly 300 people, I think, I estimated, to turn out in this little church. Like, even before we, we started, there were just so many people there, that which is unusual in PNG. Maybe it's because we were late, but everyone comes on PNG time. And we're like, well, we're not all going to fit in the church or the chapel, so let's go outside. And we strung up a sheet in the side of the building, and... Everyone sat around in the grass outside, and I thought, wouldn't it be great in Australia if we had so many people turn up to an evening service on a Wednesday that was only organised on Sunday night? You know, Sunday night, when everyone gathered there, like, oh, you know, hey, no one's busy on Wednesday, let's meet on Wednesday. So we met on Wednesday, and everyone showed up. You know, wouldn't it be great if so many people came to a spontaneous meeting like that, that we didn't all fit in the building and we all had to go and sit outside on the grass? Um, yeah, and that was was fantastic opportunity for, for me to speak, for Chris also to share his testimony, and he's he's getting better at that. He's done that quite a few times here. Uh, I can hear a vehicle at the gate. It sounds like they might be back. Yeah, they're back. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, Sunday again. I'm speaking morning and evening. Um, a couple of services at different churches it's just going to be yeah more fun i'm enjoying i enjoy speaking i love speaking to groups and i'm speaking about jesus it makes it even better yeah, but it is it is tiring and, and dinner most nights has been after nine it's been a couple of nights we haven't eaten until after 11. so yeah it's made for some very late nights and then early mornings god is faithful in all of that so yeah, looking forward to a bit of a rest and hopefully Monday you get back into framing. Oh, and on that note as well, uh, yeah, confirmed with one of my church elders a couple of days ago. Uh, as my pastor's on, on leave, taking some rest himself, which he needs. Uh, that uh, someone's taking, filling in for me on the 4th of November, preaching at home. So I'm able to extend my stay here by another week. So I need to, I still need to book flights, which I haven't done yet. And courtesy of, of the good Lord and gracious people, my bank account is back in the clear, which is fantastic. So I might actually be able to afford to book flights um, and get home in good time. Um, yeah, I think we have most of the materials for the house. There will be some some things we need by window frames and uh, the louvers and the glass and all that. Uh, if enough money continues to come in the next sort of 10 days or so, we'd love to buy a water tank and be able to put guttering on the house, uh, assuming we get the roof on, and then uh, yeah, give the, the village access to clean water, which they don't have. Uh, everyone has to use the, the muddy river, which yeah, makes it interesting. I've had a number of people, what is it, two, three, a couple at least, get yeah, a little boy with a massive boil in his groin, if you saw that. His mother brought him over, and you know, they don't have access to the hospitals, they can't get to the hospital easily. Uh, she had taken him in and they dressed it and then the dressing had come off that morning, so I don't know how long before. Um, she brought him to me, he'd been to the hospital, but he was obviously in a lot of pain and probably scared witless about the big white guy that was kneeling on the floor and t attending to him. But uh, yeah, it's just nasty and I don't have the first aid experience or knowledge to deal with that. Most of the stuff I've been taught is CPR, which hopefully I'll never have to use. But when it comes to sort of wound dressing, 
I might have to do a bit more training when I get home. Uh, so there's that little boy, then there's a uh, little Bathsheba uh, with her foot. And you, know, you ask them to try and sort of keep, a, keep the wound clean as best as we bandage it up. But they're living in little grass huts with dirt floors, many of them. And the nearest water is, or well, the only water is whatever they carry from the river. Uh, so trying to keep things clean, uh, it's, it's pretty challenging. Uh, we have been sort of attending to it through them as regularly as we can. So yeah, we'll, we'll continue to do that. Um, and yeah, the, the impact that we're having here uh, is going far beyond uh, simply building this house. It's, it's been amazing. Uh, just the way the community has been drawn together. Abraham said it's, it's like 10 or 15 years or something since the churches have all come together in the community the way they have in the last week. Um, just since Chris and I have been here. It's been yeah, a great excuse to overcome differences and churches are, are meeting and um, sharing together, which they haven't done for years. Um, you know, people in the community have been crying that they're so grateful that we've come and they're like, well, we have hardly had anything to do with, with you individually. But they're just so touched that we're, we're here. And so you know, God's work goes far beyond just you know, the physical house we're building, which will will be a, a massive asset to the community as it is. Um, some of the community leaders said to us, you know, we're building the house for the community because Abraham's going to go out on mission um, work and ministry work again in the future and the house will, will default to being um, a resting place for people visiting the community, uh, which that's just the culture here. They're, they're very communal. Uh, everything they do, they do together, which is why we've had so many willing helpers. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit of what's what's happening there. Uh, I need to try and find a way to, to thank the family that have hosted us here. All the doors squeak, so I might get some oil and see if I can fix all the squeaky doors. Uh, it might also help me sleep better when the doors are squeaking at night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll see. And yesterday, yeah, I was, I was given the keys to the Land Cruiser when we were coming in. They're like, here's the keys, you're driving. Uh, and that's, that's a lifelong, well, yeah. That's a dream that goes back quite a number of years to drive around the world, so you know, I'm getting experience driving in other countries already, which uh, yeah, is great, because the, the young guy um, here is on the year 11. He was driving us around on Saturday to us a bit of a tour. He's yeah, unlicensed and enthusiastic and honestly scared the daylights out of us <laughs> a couple of times. So that's sort of where they, or how they knew that I wanted to drive, <laughs> because I asked to drive. <laughs> well, yeah, can I, can, I, can I have a drive? Um, I'd love to have the chance to drive, even if it's just to stop you driving. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we survived. Maybe a few grey hairs or a few less hairs or something. But, yeah, anyway, that's uh, enough from me, and hopefully I'll get hold of Abraham soon and, and share a bit more of, of his take on things and where things are at. So thank you for your continued prayers and support. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing where God takes us next. Thanks.